good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm changing this introduction every time. Hello, dear listeners of todebate.eu, the favorite podcast of debating in the galaxy, in the universe of, I guess, mankind and people who have ears. In any case, I'm not alone in this debate. And this co-host is your wonderful Dirk sitting at home in Germany. Yeah. Aren't you also puzzled by how humble we are when we describe our podcast project? I mean, we only say the plain truth that it's the best podcast project in the universe. And of course, there, are, there is also the idea of a multiverse. So I think the jury is still out on the multiverse, is it? I have not explored that yet, but I do maintain that it is the, be the best and probably going to be the longest lasting debating podcast. <laughs> And, in the universe of mankind. And and in the multiverse. Now, now in, watch, in, watch okay. me doing that transition. In that multiverse, there is somewhere a Sebastian sitting right now, surrounded by th at least three consumer drones this moment that serve him coffee or maybe weed or answer <laughs> your phone or tell you that someone is at the door or fetch your keys for you or whatnot. Wouldn't that be wonderful, Sebastian? I, it sounds like a dream to me. Do you realize that you, the flip of the coin has decided you should be against banning consumer drones? Because yeah, today, yeah, this I do realize we'll that. be talking about about whether consumer. I drones like I like to be, be praised for be the transition. Come on, give it to me. That transition yeah, okay, was just. Fine. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a space cookie. <laughs> and the reason, and the reason, Doug, you're mentioning cannabis and and my weed is because of one of our previous debates was about whether Canada made a mistake on legalizing cannabis. Because yeah. otherwise, neither you nor I um, use drugs. I don't but, even drink But coffee. as we established last time, we also don't judge. So if you're right now having your, your Thanksgiving dinner and you feel very relaxed all of a sudden because there was a magic ingredient in the turkey that you had, we are not judging, right? As long as you're relaxed and you're listening to us and uh, <laughs> sharing our podcast with friends and voting and listening next week again, we're not judging. Promise. Yeah, promise. If you have drones. That was an attempt at transition. I think next I time did my transition earlier. Transition. From now on, I keep messing it up <laughs> until we actually start. All right. So the motion today is consumer drones should be banned. As most of you have realized, maybe you've even seen them outdoors when you travel around or even if you go out in your city. Uh, you probably have noticed that people are buying drones more and more and using drones uh, to film, take photos, and to do what, I don't know what they're doing with their drones otherwise. Um, but this is happening. It's certainly a big trend. And the question is, should they be banned? And the flip of the coin decided that I'm against banning and you four, and also that I'm going first and you second. Correct. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Drones come in all sizes and shapes, from little photographic devices to delivery drones to the future of personal transportation. Yes, this also is a drone. Being allowed to fly around um, in an automatic device that, that controls and steers itself would technically be a drone. Because what is a drone? A drone is a flying object that basically flies on its own, either remote controlled or controlled by an artificial intelligence or some algorithm or some central control instance. So the latter, by the way, is often called a flying car, but technically these could also be called consumer drones if certain criteria apply. I'm not going into this because I do think that leads too far, but it's just to kind of set the stage for what we're talking about, because it's more than just a little drone that takes pictures of you and your friends. There is more to that spectrum. Some even say this is the future of personal assistant technology. Imagine the smart speaker systems basically um, always kind of circling you and doing things for you, like small deliveries. Imagine you're on the road and you uh, you, you know this, oh, crap, I forgot my medication. These drones technically can fly back and fetch it for you. Or drones that fly forward and tell you uh, how long the queue is that you're about to line up into or, or whatnot. There, there are many, many scenarios that we can think of when talking about consumer drones, personal drones. Now, the motion of just banning them goes way too far. It goes into civil liberties. 
So why should you ban something that I'm free to use? Maybe regulate it. Maybe say there are use cases and scenarios and certain regulations these devices have to comply with. But uh, also, it is a matter of technology evolution. So there will be scenarios that require drones to be around and that require everyone to be allowed to operate and, and have one. So I'm strictly against banning them. I'm for making sure that they are safe. I'm for making sure that they are not a nuisance. But I'm against banning them because it is one of the pillars of our technological future. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a swarm of bees? No, it's an army of drones. Imagine a swarm of drones in the coming years. Imagine the noise pollution, the visual pollution, the base pollution even of having so many devices which have crashed into lakes, into, into, into trees. Drones for the police, for warfare, for agricultural use, for package delivery, fine. It's limited and it's operated by professionals. Consumer drones are operated by people like me who have no idea how to control them. I used to own a drone and within six months I managed to crash it. Look at the number of crash videos on YouTube. For now, people are just wowed, right? They see a drone, you know, they, see, they see the thing that flies as if they've never seen a plane before or a helicopter or what have you. They think it's amazing. It's something that makes tons of noise and flies over your head and has created already so many accidents of crashing into trees, but also into crowds and people. It's also a danger for emergency services. It's in the way. Uh, they have been like, uh, it was in the, in the case of the recovery of the Thai children in the cave uh, which made the headlines, and some journalists were using drones and uh, were in the way of trying to, uh, for the emergency services to plan for the operation, the extraction operation. People capture tons of videos and photos. Great. They use Instagram. We talked about it in a previous debate, and they do nothing with those videos and photos. At least smartphones don't make too much noise and are not as invasive as compared to, to drones, because the biggest threat to be honest, with consumer drones, is an invasion of privacy. You have this thing flying over your house, your apartment, your garden, wherever you are, and we're already invaded in so many ways. But drones are much more risky as they can virtually go anywhere and see you and what you're doing from any possible angle. With my smartphone, I am limited to where I'm standing. It's also very disruptive to wildlife. You have, may have seen some articles in the press which have shown drones interfering with wildlife and nature. And like some of our other debates in which we could have wished for, for some things to be forbidden and it would not work in practice to ban them, in this case, you can actually ban consumer drones. It can be enforced. Signals can be jammed. They can be taken down by police drones or lasers and fines can be given to people. So for all these reasons, consumer drones should certainly be banned. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Virtually everything you said would be true for remote control planes. Maybe not that remote control planes see you from every angle, but remote control planes are legal. You are allowed to have one. You're allowed to fly one. No one bans it. Basically, there's regulation around that. So you've been, you, you are being told where to fly it, what kind of uh, planes you can fly, and how long in what environment you can fly them. So through regulation, it's made sure that it's not disruptive to wildlife, not going in the, uh, getting into the way of emergency services, not crashing into crowds. So number one, a whole class of your arguments basically dismissed. I'm sorry. That's a case for regulation. Number two, you mentioned a couple of things that are technical problems. Crashing into crowds, being misguided, flying into the wrong areas, flying into the way of emergency services. This will go away with technologies. Drones are flying autonomically already. They, are, they become smarter by the minute. And it's, only, it's a question of software and technology to make sure that they are not crashing into crowds or not even starting in crowds. Why not going one step further? If they carry a camera, certainly you can detect people around them and, and decide not to start when there are more than three people close by or, or 10 people or what have you, or just start in certain directions or keep a minimum level of distance or whatever comes to mind. It's a technical problem to make them safe and I'm all for making them safe. 
So in the beginning, you probably limit where they are allowed to fly around. And then you limit and what kind of scenarios with what kind of software and hardware um, you're allowed to fly them around. But you don't ban them. Now you mentioned noise, a swarm of drones flying around. I know that argument, that argument will go away with technology as well. You yourself, in a conversation we just had half an hour ago, pointed me to an article about a flying device that flies virtually without any sound. It has no moving parts. It flies, uh, uh, I don't even know the principle, but it's something something like an ionic wind technology. So it, it flies without a, a rotational device. It flies without sound. And yeah, if you have small devices flying around without making a noise, but providing me with services Maybe some of them taking pictures, analyzing the road ahead of me, fetching something, delivering something. There are plenty of scenarios. Then I'm actually not that concerned about the noise level. Those devices are small and they are lightweight. So they are easier, uh, some say, to secure than devices that are as big as cars. And we had a debate about flying cars in the path that I'm referring to here, of course. So I do think this is also a problem that will go away pretty soon. Also, you can have no-fly zones that are enforced through software. And therefore, no, uh, we shouldn't ban them. We should keep a close eye on them, but they should be perfectly legal and should be allowed to fly around. And now on to Sebastian. You talked about remote-controlled planes. As far as I know, they're very limited in terms of numbers compared to millions of drones being sold currently to consumers. From estimates I have seen very quickly, I think there's at least 1 million drones being sold to consumers, being possessed by consumers today just in the US alone. Imagine the millions, the tens of millions of drones that people have currently all over the world. That's why I talk about this swarm, this army of drones everywhere. Because even if you solve with technology, the fact that it may not crash again, which, by the way, will not be entirely uh, uh, foolproof because of battery issues and whatnot, it will still be in your line of sight. It will still be visual pollution. You will still have people going close to bears and penguins and what have you to disrupt their life, right? Because they will be visible to them. The bear will actually see it, even if it becomes completely silent. It will not become invisible. It will still be intrusive to the privacy and of anyone, humans and animals alike. We are not professionals also. You're laughing at my privacy of animals. I guess I messed up on that one. Um, we are not professionals. Most people don't even know how to change and modify settings on their phones. Right? They don't know forever. They've never managed to set up an antivirus on their laptop or their desktop computer. Do you really expect them to know how to use a drone, even if you give them the technology in their hands? I can bet you that it's not going to be the case. Another reason to ban them, and here it's going to be a very grim reason. Some armies, and I'm going to mention the Israeli army, uh, specifically here, is using consumer drones for military purposes. And here's the risk. They don't say it's an army drone. It's not tagged or painted as such. It looks like a consumer drone. And they play on that confusion on purpose. So if you don't regulate it, it's going to be very easy for armies or stealth soldiers like the Russians in Ukraine to make it seem that it's just Russian civilians or Ukrainian civilians you know, fighting for their freedom and using whatever consumer drones they have available. So let me, let's make it very clear. There are used for weapons and not disguised under consumer usage. The other reason why they should be banned, there's a th at least three examples in recent history over the past year or so whereby consumer drones have been used for ter terrorism. One use was a drone used by ISIS to drop a grenade. And it's far deadlier in that way when you actually attach a grenade to a drone. In Ukraine, an open-air stockpile exploded after an attack, which was likely conducted by a drone with, again, a grenade. And in Venezuela, a few months ago, you may remember that there was an assassination attempt on, on the president. So fair enough, he's probably a dictator, but that's not a reason. So again, by having these seemingly innocent consumer drones flying everywhere, you will not be able to distinguish also what is a terrorism threat. It's just one of the reasons, among everything I've mentioned before, whereby it's very disruptive, to your line of sight, to your privacy, to uh, the lifestyle of, I don't know how to describe this in proper English, of animals and wildlife. And armies don't really care, and they play on this ambiguity. So I think for all these reasons, consumer drones should be banned. 
final statements. Dirk goes first. Let's ban cars. Because terrorists are known to use cars to, to attack people and there's no way to tell a terrorist car from a non-terrorist car. Let's ban bicycles because you could stuff them with explosives and attack a governmental organization. But how about we ban people? I like to ban people too. Except for, for those who sit at home and listen to, to debate. Everybody else should be banned because they are potential terrorists and there's really there's really no way to, to really tell apart potential terrorists from normal people i think our listeners see through that uh there is there's something to be said about freedom and there's something to be said about technology and something to be said about being progressive and open for the future and being skeptical about every piece of technology around now sebastian you're beyond the 40 now so i do get i do guess you're getting more conservative by each year and you don't know how to fly a drone or set the settings on your smartphone or what have you but in the end this is also about freedom and about being treated as an adult and about being allowed to uh, to participate in a technology evolution that we see do we need rules of engagement? Do we need standards? Do we need to make sure that people are not flying everywhere and take pictures of you sunbathing in your backyard? Yes, we need rules for that. And to your argument about the animal wildlife and the privacy of the bears and ducks and what have you, I'm pretty sure that it's better to fly there with a drone instead of going there yourself. So what is more disruptive, you with your Nikon or a drone that passes by and potentially comes without a sound because the future generations of drones will be less disruptive no we shouldn't ban them let's keep them let's make sure that we use them safely and uh have good rules of engagement and learn from past mistakes but uh it's perfectly fine to have drones sebastian i know drones look cool here's the thing uh for those of you who have had uh, a wedding you probably uh, purchased the services of a photographer Right, because you know a professional will take better photos. Likewise, when you use your drone, what are you doing with these photos and videos? They're probably not taking very professionally. You're just playing. Come on, let's admit it. Right? We're just playing. We're not doing anything useful with it. And the problem with these millions of devices, hundreds of millions of devices potentially, is that they are visible. They're in everyone's way. It's not just about the noise, which could be perhaps solved, not, not a given, not tomorrow uh, at least, but they're in everyone's way and they will never be 100% safe. Fair enough. Other devices are not safe either, but you're just adding and adding to the complexity and to be in the way of, as I mentioned, emergency services and things that are operated by professionals. I'm not saying drones are not useful. They're just not useful in the hands of consumers who are just using this as an extra toy and not doing anything useful with them, but actually are being very much disruptive and a threat and can be misused on purpose by people and armies which are playing on ambiguity between professional and consumer usage of these drones. So unfortunately, I'm in favor of banning these consumer drones, however cool they look. I don't even think they look that cool. Maybe they don't look cool in, in terms of how they look like, but in terms of using them, it's fun. You can try, you know, you can try playing with this or you have different use cases. Like um, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Rich, I don't know if you're aware, Rich uh, Heinemann. Yeah. Using uh, first person view, uh, I think goggles yeah, so or whatever. Is he doing drone racing? So they basically set up uh, races, racetracks, or fly in uh, parking lots. Yes. And they, they have then 3D glasses on that kind of uh, give you the real-time view from the drone. And then they fly these things. I think this is incredibly cool. I would be yeah. motion sick in a second, by the way. It's a, it's a sport I totally cannot even try. Because I... I, I yeah, it, uh, it would be messy. Um, but uh, in, in general, I do think it's a pretty cool sport. Yeah, yeah I agree. And in fact, these devices, I think, can go at least to 100 kilometers per hour. I have no idea how you control this at that speed yeah. on, a, on a circuit. But yeah, I've, I find it pretty interesting. But that's a controlled environment. It's not letting things, you know, ha having people, having these devices in their hands. Uh, and it goes counter to what I'm doing on a personal level because I have crashed that drone and I'm using my brother's <laughs> drone. But I try to do something out of it, right? I try to publish videos. I try to make a video memory of where I went. 
But even then, I have such a backlog because it takes a lot of time. I should have men mentioned this a bit more, insisted that it takes a lot of time to do video editing of anything. That I am absolutely certain that 99% of the people who do anything with their drones goes to the bin. Either the drone goes to the bin because they don't use it, because they crash it, or because the video they've captured, they never even export it from their SD card. And that's even my, my brother is the same. He bought his drone. That's how I get it. But isn't that, isn't that the, the, the main counter argument? Basically, you made it sound like people will be surrounded by swarms of drones and take pictures yeah. of everything and videos. And now you're basically making the counter argument saying, oh, yeah, people will be consume victims. They will go and buy one and fly around. And then it, they're getting annoyed uh, about having to edit the stuff. And then they, they will leave it at home and not do it anymore. Isn't that the counter argument to, to what you I, just said earlier? It could be, but uh, as soon as you said that, I'm also thinking if that data exists somewhere, it can be exploited by the people who you don't want to be exploiting the data. But if your SD card contains that data or imagine, which is probably not going to be an SD card in, in the years to come, it goes automatically to the cloud. right? And hackers get your password because obviously your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, obviously, or password, yeah. right? Then, then this data could be used, right? And that's the problem because you'll get like millions of data points, extra data points, which you had no idea existed because you forgot about it and you didn't give a crap about it. But and then, it's just there. That would be true for every piece of device, right? True, yes, but it's less invasive. That's the point, right? Like your smartphone, it is already recording everything. It is already a problem, a privacy issue, like the smart speakers that we can talk about next time. But at the drone, here the thing with the drone is that you can go like to multiple kilometers up in altitude and you have no idea it's there, right? You can actually have every single angle and record absolutely everything. You could even put like infrared stuff or thermal devices and sensors, which already exist for professional usage. So that's why I insisted on the consumer aspect where it's just like being used by people who have no idea how to use they, people, Most people, even I, are like completely like crappy when it comes to 3D orientation. That's why we comp it's so difficult to fly planes, I assume. There's all these buttons, plus having a sense of 3D. Uh, when we walk, we walk on a 2D plane. Yeah. Right? So I think I think it's so complex that people are just playing with it, having fun with it. Maybe it would just disappear on its own, to be honest. People will just get tired of it. It's a marketing you know, thing. Right I do now. think that the most invasive use of drones will be non-consumer stuff. So um, in there are there are plenty of U.S. cities um, where they have flying eyes. So autonomous flying objects as high in the air that you cannot see them with the bare eyes, taking permanently pictures of the of the the scenery, and they can make things uh, do things like uh, tracing people, tracing cars. Of course, they use it for things like accidents that they detect that way. They use it for things like a traffic control. But it's it, it only takes so much fantasy to to pretty much arrive at, at very dark scenarios. So I do believe yeah. the the darkest scenarios you can come up with with drones have nothing to do with consumer drones. They actually have to do with the kind of use cases you're not preventing anyway. Yeah, it's true. It's true. In fact, what you, you mentioned the eye in the sky. It's the name of a film that was released two and a half years ago. I don't know if you saw it. No. Uh, which was exactly about this military usage between uh, a general and a colonel, which faced political opposition after ordering a drone missile strike mm -hmm. to take out a group of suicide bombers in Kenya. Right. So it's, it looks very real. It's actually a fiction, but it looks very real. So mm -hmm. it's actually very interesting to see the ethical, political military dilemma when it comes to that kind of usage, which I, I think I tend to agree with you, the consequences will be way more massive than a bunch of even millions of drones just crashing in buildings on people's faces and what have you, uh, probably probably incurring minor, min, minor uh, wounds on people at most. I, I tend to agree with you. Yeah, yeah and, and that, it will that's be... why I actually wanted to, to, to talk about consumer drones, because you know if we start talking about warfare drones, it's, it's a whole topic altogether. And that, that also goes to say the the misuse of uh, drones by terrorists. I do think this is true for any kind of mechanism we have out there, like the, the postal system. And that's why I started by saying, hey, let's ban cars, let's ban bicycles, let's ban whatever, because you can pretty much everything that you, every piece of technology that you have can be exploited to do something criminal or terroristic. And yeah. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm with you on that. It's just banning will not protect us. 
I guess the slight difference with a, with a drone as opposed to a car or bicycle is that you don't take any risk yourself, right? A terrorist can reuse multiple drones, whereas using a car, you need to find a suicide driver. Oh, you and can it's not park it somewhere. But yeah, maybe the delivery is, I, is easier, right? Um, the, I, I agree cheaper. on that. Yeah, right. cheaper, cheaper too. And you can operate from anywhere, basically. Anyway. You will have whole fleets of drones. I, yeah. I do think this is going to happen at some point, yeah. It's, it's quite interesting to, I don't know, we're living at this inflection point, I think, on so many aspects of technology that uh, I, I wonder what's going to happen, like how, how the world's going to look like in 10 years, 20 years' time. It's evolving so quickly. And to the terror threat, by the way, I do think, coming to the point, we will have drone technology and banning them from the consumer space will not protect us from terrorists starting drones somewhere and before you can take them down going somewhere. Um, because for every countermeasure we come up with, there is something they will do as well. And uh, those th devices, the main problem about these devices is they exist and they are cheap. And they exist and are cheap no matter if you ban them or not. <laughs> so it's, this, is the, this is why I, I kind of have a hard time with that particular argument. Um, it, it's, it's scary, but it's not scaring in that particular context because I don't believe that banning consumer drones really makes any difference there. Um, the, the argument that strikes home most for me is basically the nuisance argument, like, hey, uh, I, I don't want to have a drone wherever I look. And probably, I, I personally believe there will be bans like, or you're not flying a drone in a, in a public space, or you're, no, you're not flying a drone in restaurants, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you're not flying a personal drone in an environment where there are like more than 10 people, stuff like this will happen and will be probably baked into the software itself. So we will see drones that refuse to even start when you're in a it's soccer stadium, the case. for instance. Yeah, it's actually already the case. You have no fly zones and the software prevents you yeah. from uh, taking off. Uh, although I guess you can, I'm pretty sure you can jailbreak the, the whole thing. But I'm pretty sure but that anyway. you risk being, being basically fined, yeah. yeah. And in fact, there's so many no-fly zones now, especially in the US, or at least in developed countries, that it virtually makes the drone usage almost impossible, to be honest. When I took my drone in the US before I crashed it, I could almost not find a, a, a spot where to fly it. And when I did try to ask for legal authorization, the authorities were not aware of what to do. I called a hospital which had a heliport to warn them, which is the standard process. And uh, they told me they had no idea what to do. Uh, so they asked me to call the police. And the police, I asked me to, to. Um, so I called the police and they said, well, an officer will call me back because they had no idea. So they asked me for my name. I said, my name is Doug Prims. Oh, Here's yeah. my number. Yeah. Uh, they never called me back. Uh, Since then, so, they listened to two debate and uh, vote <laughs> for me on every motion. Thank you very much. I'm sure this, I'm sure this is what they do. So anyway, uh, yeah, I even if the thing is even if even if the drones are not banned, actually, what's probably going to happen is that there's going to be so many no-fly zones that virtually it will be it will be illegal to fly them anywhere. Which is a clever way of not banning the device, but actually the, banning the the space where you can use it. Yeah, I mean there's a legal argument as well, right? So you in um, you I I think it's fair to restrict in the interest of others, but it only goes so far. And, um, and so at some point you have places where you're allowed to fly them and you then you go there to do it pretty much. This is the case today with the model, with the, with the, with the remote control planes. So you have designated places where you're allowed to fly them, where there is a license and you have to insure them and everything. Um, but outside of these, uh, these fly zones, um, you would also be surprised how much of the air airspace actually is controlled these days. So you're not flying for long with your device, <laughs> especially not here in Frankfurt. I'm pretty sure that if I fly, if I legally start anything here close to the airport, I will have new friends in the po local police departments very, very quickly. I'll bring you some oranges <laughs> and tea. Yep. All right. With no Thank you for listening. As always, you can you are free. It is not banned yet to vote for or against uh, the motion. So please visit the website. And in any case, feel free to email us, leave us feedback and to stay tuned to our podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sebastian. Thank you. mentioned 
and remote controlled planes, uh, as far as I know, they're not as popular as drones. We're talking about millions of drones currently. And I hear this noise and I'm sorry about this. Great. I guess you can hear it too. I can hear it too. <laughs> Is that a drone? Yes, it's a drone. You should ban them. One of the old drones. A drone yeah. with, with knife. Okay. Oh boy! Mm-hmm. <laughs> is everything about the end of the world these days? It is. Every time I will use emotional argument. You will not. <laughs> I will use emotions to the core. Yeah, so I can start telling you. So you don't think that a little bear playing in the mud? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Try me. <laughs>